I'm here with David from Invincible Boats and we're on a beautiful 39 Monohull Open Fisherman. Thank you very much for taking me out. The weather's absolutely gorgeous right here in their facility. So check this out. This is the first thing that you see as a client walking into Invincible Boats and it could not be any more thorough and well thought out. You have an entire console that you guys put here so you can feel it, touch it, and see what it's like to be behind the helm of either a 35 cat or a 39 monohull with this console in particular. I got David with me. Thank you for taking the time. Yep, thanks, Alan. What else is the client looking at here? Take us through. So the idea is that when the client comes in, they get a nice warm welcome feeling in our showroom and we really get a chance to, to kind of talk through what they're looking for, understand what the client's needs are. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we go through the different sections and the partitions of this room and kind of work our way around the room, it gives the customer a feel of some of the different options they have. So starting here in our first option kind of partition, it goes through hull color options, some uh, different upholstery patterns and things that they can pick out there. And then also gives them an option to different pick out the, the whole side logo color, that's correct. So with this, you can see we've got just our kind of traditional plain Jane white uh, vinyl upholstery, a double diamond stitch with a more textured finish. And then our, our uh, top of the line, the honeycomb. Very cool. It's nice, I mean, you see these things on a website or on a piece of paper, it's nothing like you know, taking the extra step, how you guys have done it right here, actually. This is an actual gel coat sample? Yeah, it is. And, and it gives the customer an opportunity, too, to take the color outside and really see what it looks like in the sun, which sometimes cool. with the boats being inside the facility doesn't really give you an opportunity to see what that will look like in real life. That's awesome. Yeah, let's continue our way. It's nice to see the extra step that you guys take to be able to create this experience, which is just part of being a customer, obviously, of Invincible Boats. Yeah, so we, we really took pride in, in this room when we developed it. Here you can kind of see some of the light options we offer. We, we do work strictly with uh, Lumatech on, mm -hmm. our, on our under gunnel, underwater, and uh, spreader lights uh, throughout the boat as well. Uh, Gator Step, we've partnered with them to do some of our foam decking. Uh, we really feel like they've delivered a, a, a premium product, which pairs well with our premium brand. Mm -hmm. Here you can see some of the different rub rail options, electric reel outlets, 30 amp shore power, uh, and then the, the uh, float switches for your bilge pumps. We just like to display that, that we're using actually the Ultra Junior switch now, which is state of the art, top of the line. Um, right. Up top you can see that you have the option for etched live well lids, and you can also upgrade your in-floor well to a clear lid if that's uh, what you want to do. Some guys like to see their baits, some guys like to think that their baits like light, you know, it just yeah, depends, yeah. On, depends on Everyone what you like. Everyone has their thing. That's right. Sure. You yeah, definitely guys have thought it all. I have a whole JL Audio display, which guys at JL, we've been trying to get one of these at our office. We need some tunes from time to time and what better way to display JL Audio sound than something like this. I, I assume this thing's gotta be crazy loud in here. Oh, it cranks. Yeah, for the yeah. holiday parties, it really works well and also gives the customer a feel about what JL is all about. Yeah, awesome. So moving on down, we've got uh, sea chest options. This is, as I was explaining to you, kind of a little bit outdated. So we're in the, in the process of updating it, but we've, we've Paired with Best Marine, we're strictly doing Best Marine now. We've obsoleted our fiberglass sea chest. Uh, this kind of shows you what their high-speed pickup looks like. Mm -hmm. Here we've got a, a section of a gunnel. This is actually molded out of one of our tools uh, to show you the different rod holder options. So heavy duty swivel versus just standard duty. Right. On this wall, we've got our powder coating options. This is related to the uh, T-top frame, rod holders, things like that. Anything powder coated on the boat, you can see what you have here. Again, it gives you, the, the customer, the opportunity to pick it up, take it oh, outside, wow. look at it in the sun, see what they like. On your side over there, there's the Argento colors, which have a little more flake to them. Yeah, that's really cool. And then up here, we've just got our rod holder, gaff holder. Gaff holders. Just to display that we have these as options. That's incredibly nice. I mean, obviously with a few of the boats that we've built, we've tried to mix and match colors and, and we get lucky sometimes, but we've gotten unlucky sometimes as well. And just having this right here can take you through the entire boat. It's, a, it's an incredible tool to offer to your clients. So Absolutely. really appreciate this area. We haven't even made it to the facility and and we're pretty excited about what we're seeing so far. Even have the gaff holders and rod holders for Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. It gets us fired up so. about fishing. So uh, yeah, if we want to kind of continue working our way around the room, we've got our, our helm seat option here. These, uh, this, this was off of a dual row boat, so this kind of would show you what that would look like. And then to my right, we've got our traditional back-to-back -back leaning post with a bench seat option. Of course, this folds up, so you've got some storage underneath. Mm -hmm. And in the back here, we have a flip-down tackle storage, which is a nice place to keep, uh, you know, whatever it is you want to keep on board, right? We've got some drawers in here, we've got some tackle storage in center, so things like that. And uh, underneath the <clears throat> aft-facing seat here, we've got an insulated cooler. 
Very so. nice. And for you guys that watch our stuff on YouTube, alongside this factory tour that we're doing here today, we actually recently shot a 39 open. So you're gonna be able to see all of this that you're seeing right here on an actual boat. We got the drone up in the air, got some running footage and went through that thing from A to Z. So make sure to chime in on that video as well. These are the new Mercury 1000s? or These are the new Mercury 1000s featuring our 400 gallon live one. That's correct. <laughs> perfect, <laughs> perfect. When uh, 80 gallons is not enough, 400 is a nice upgrade. <laughs> Got here it looks like lamination yeah this, this is down this is our lamb bay you know we kind of caught it later in the afternoon so it's not as, as buzzing as it typically is but sure. as you can see we've got um, our 33 cat liner here it's getting a fresh coat of gel coat uh, we'll probably put the skin on tomorrow morning starting about four o'clock but we still have a number of molds over here that are being worked on a couple of them are empty just getting ready to be sprayed uh, behind me we've got some of our console molds as we work down this line here we've got our 43 stringer oh, I don't walk around the 46 cat liner right next to it, which is covered. Next to that, we've got our 33 cat ring deck and down the line, our 33 cat hulls. Wow. And over here, we just got some small parts. Uh, we've got some fish box, live well tubs, a couple of our pilot house molds. Uh, over here, some seating molds. And then this is actually our large coffin box, our 43 console. So just a number of different molds in here, as you would expect in kind of the lamination right. bay. How many boats are you guys building a year right now? We're at about 164. Wow impressive to keep all this stuff organized and working in sequence I've always seen it you know incredible how you guys do it uh, obviously it's no easy feat but you guys do a great job of it, yeah, thanks. So, yeah complimenting you and again we, we showed up here late in the afternoon we kind of wanted to keep it quiet but uh, thankfully we got a little bit of action but just so you guys understand there's not one guy working in here uh, usually throughout the day <laughs> yeah it's usually about 50 or 60 guys just in this building alone really this is our carpentry area. This is kind of where we cut some of our substrates for our core kits, our glass kits. You can see over here, we're working on, uh, I'm not exactly sure what this is. This is probably, I was gonna ask you, what is this? That's probably a stand to keep- uh, The leaning post, the big just yeah. rectangular one? <laughs> Top secret, I can't Top go into detail on it. So over here though, you can see this is some of our uh, substrates for our, probably our 33 cat. Uh, this looks like a trim tab pocket piece and it's actually Kusa board. Kusa board. High density, very light, very strong. And uh, over here to my right is some transom boards that are just uh, getting prepped up. We do a little reworking on them, making sure they're going to fit just right once we get that glass and core in the boat. Right. Oh, it's nice how you guys cut them out. Is that CNC cut? Yeah. So this actually comes from some of our third-party suppliers. We're, we're in the midst of yeah. We're in the midst of transitioning from cutting in-house to having third parties cut for us, which gives us the flexibility to to not in inventory all this um, all this stock and uh, it allows us to make changes actually a little bit easier with a third party doing it. All right. And we'll definitely facilitate our, our transition to infusion. We're already kicking that off here. We've infused a couple of big parts, hulls, liners, decks, hard So you tops. guys are just starting the infusion now? You weren't infusing before? Correct, yeah, correct. Okay. We uh, just, just last week infused our 43, first 43 hole mold, so we're excited oh, really? about that. Very nice. Yeah. All right, well, if you guys are not familiar with this Kusa board, a lot of companies use this in the transom. Like you said, it's light, very rigid, and obviously with the stress you're putting with all the outboard power that we're seeing nowadays and these large center consoles you need a big thick piece like that and having it pre-cut by a third-party company you know allows them to be more efficient they don't have to waste time you know trying to do this here in place and most of the time your cuts aren't coming out as perfect as you see here i've seen that you guys your guys weren't good but from what we've seen in the past usually doing it by hand doesn't give you the same result as you know a machine can do it so good to see and something we see, you know, more common throughout uh, the boating industry. So let's get back in here, David. What do we? More stuff back? So yeah, over here, just again, more carpentry area. We're, we've got some aluminum substrates. This is where we do our aluminum cutting for our, our hatch reinforcements, uh, things like that. You know, if you were to get a rocket launcher, obviously you'd get a piece larger than this. But uh, this typically okay. would go in, say, a coffin box. So your your gas shock would come drilled and tapped into the aluminum. The aluminum's embedded in the fiberglass for oh, extra wow. strength. And this th this is as thick as you're getting for a fiberglass for a, uh, a gas shock? That's as thick as you're getting for a gas shock. Oh my so God. On some of our coffin box lids, they weigh up to 100 pounds with yeah, all the insulation that, that's uh, that's in them. So we want to make sure that that's, that gas shock's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, that's a great extra step. And I think obviously something mandatory on a piece that big. But you know when you're drilling into this, obviously you're not going to get that threaded problem having those things just rip out of the fiberglass. This is a heavy duty 
serious piece of aluminum. Yes, it is. I see some divinacell here. Are you guys also cutting the uh, the coring? So some of the core we are. Some of the stuff like uh, smaller items like fish boxes. Um, for the we put core on the bottoms of all of our fish boxes, our hatch lids. Uh, live well tubs, things like that where we have smaller pieces where it just makes sense for us to cut them. The fit doesn't have to necessarily be as perfect as it does a whole bottom or a whole side. Right. It, it doesn't make sense for us financially to outsource that. We, we can we could do it in house and manage it ourselves. Okay, and the, the boat right now, the hull is cored on all sides? Correct, as well? yeah, so all of our parts have core in them, hull deck liner. Uh, the hulls themselves have got uh, a high density 130 pound core on the bottom. Uh, then the whole sides are, are as well high density core. So. Okay. And then we use a higher density core throughout, as we talked about with the boards on the transoms and things like that. Were you guys coring the bottoms prior to the infusion or did that start now with the No, infusion? we've always cored our bottoms. Okay. Well, usually doing that gives you the thickness, it gives you a little bit uh, lighter weight, you know, more speed. Um, and now with the technology and the materials they're bringing out now, you get incredible strength as well. Yeah, the sandwich structure of core where you have fiberglass, core fiberglass, really gives you a lot more stiffness than a monolithic solid laminate hull bottom. So really? that's, that's why we're using it top of the line technology, top of the line products. We, we don't cheap out on that. All vinyl ester, resins, and things like that. Very good. Let's continue on. Okay, so this just keeps on going. We walked through some double doors. What is this area we're looking at now? So this is the third part of our infusion, or excuse me, our lamination bay where we're doing some smaller parts. As we're here, you can see we've got a fish box. That's for our extended coffin on our 40s and our 46. Uh, over here, we just got a number of different small parts that we are hand laying, the hatch lids, uh, fish box accesses, you know, fuel tank accesses that are in the liner floor, all of the small parts and pieces that are, that are fiberglass that go into our boats. To my left, we've got our, our paint booth, uh, which is where we uh, spray the undersides of our hardtop. So today, all of our hardtops are all gripped on the bottom side. It gives us a better finish, and we can do a, a pretty good job of matching the paint on the hull side as well. Oh, okay, I didn't know that, very nice. How do you guys keep all this organized? I mean, it's like a line that these are going through or, or yeah, so walk me through that. The, the way we do it in here is, is we kind of just take the opportunity of, of spraying free molds when they're empty. Oh, okay, um, gotcha. our, our production managers in here know exactly what's needed when. when. Uh, so if a mold's not in use, it'll kind of be stored underneath the tables where they're a little bit more protected. And the molds that are up on the tables are currently being laid up because there is a need for, for the part that comes out of that mold. Okay, I see driving in here, you guys have several buildings. It seems like this whole area is Invincible Town now. How many buildings are you guys in right now? So and approximately how many square feet, let's say? So we're in five different buildings here, and off the top of my head, it's probably somewhere just shy of 200,000 square feet. I think 150 wow. in that range. Very impressive. Um, we got I, re I remember coming out here years ago now, I think that was early on of center consoles only, and the expansion from that point to now has been impressive, and we've only seen just a small part of this. So. Yeah, the biggest move for us was getting into the, the General Assembly building, what we call Building 5. Uh, that, that's been our biggest biggest move for us, the biggest building we have so far here in Opalaka. It really gave us a, the ability to, to expand on our production line and hit some of the larger numbers that we've been trying to achieve. Very cool. Are your hatches, looks like two-piece two piece molds? Yeah, so what you can see here is all of our hatches, all of our hatch lids, with the exception of, of the ones that are silicone in place, are two-piece mold, A-class fit, A finish on both sides of the parts. Uh, it just helps us differentiate ourselves with some of the competition out there. It gives us a really nice product. And furthermore, when you're fishing, it's so difficult to keep the bottom side of a, of a hatch lid clean if it's rough fiberglass. So keeping an A-class finish, a nice wax part, yeah. it gets that fish blood right off. On well, a boat like an Invincible and in that class of boat, seeing that extra detail, I think, goes you know leaps and bounds when you're looking to purchase something in that range. You guys do a great job with it. I've always been a big fan of Invincible and really cool to see how it all comes together. And ho hopefully you guys enjoy this because this whole how it's made kind of process has is, is always been fun for us to watch. And, Every builder has their own way of doing things, so it's cool to see how, how you guys do it in comparison to maybe some other companies. So we appreciate you bringing us in here again um, and showing us around. So here we've got one of our newer hardtops. This is our, our what we're calling our pilot house style hardtop. This one is uh, just getting the finishing touches. Because it's a two-piece mold, we do have to do some hand, manual finish work around what we call the weld. So uh -huh. we'll come back, we'll put a layer of glass here, we'll finish it off, and it'll have a nice A-class finish just like the bottom side of the top side of the hardtop would have. Gotcha. And you create this kind of a lifted area just to be able to run wire and so, stuff yeah, like this, that? So yeah, this kind of gives us a unique, uh, a unique top different than the rest of our tops, uh, what we call like the surfboard style, which is simply just two flat face pieces being put together, not a lot of places to put electronics. Here, this would be right above the helm as the captain of the boat, so you've got a place to put your VHF, 
your Mercury vessel view, your stereo controller, things like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course, we've got some wireways here, which does make rigging easier for us. And then in the back, we've got an area for an MFD, some, some JL audio speakers, things like that, that, that can really uh, help just bring another, bring some more life to the boat and to the hardtop. Sure. And this is for the 46 Pilot House? This is actually what we just call it is the 46, is we call it the Pilot House style, but this could be used on our 40 cat open dual row, our 43 mono dual row, and our 46 cat dual row boat. So this is an extended hardtop with that same kind of shape and geometry of the Pilot House, but we're just calling it the Pilot House style. It's impressive to see the size of this thing. It doesn't look nearly as big when it's on the boat, but when this thing's laying flat, I mean, it's absolutely massive. Yeah, you could fit a 13-foot whaler on top of that thing if you <laughs> yeah, wanted to. I believe to. it. I believe it. And then some, it'd have a quite the hefty beam on it. And I guess that's uh, this is the same thing. Same thing. Yeah, another one here. Um, and then just some more fish box lids and things like that. All right, so David, what do we have here on this top? This is obviously a different style, more of a straight-up rectangle. Yeah, Which so this is, this is what I would consider more of our traditional style hardtop, the surfboard style. Again, two-piece mold, A-class finish, top side and bottom side. This is our extended hardtop. So this is the predecessor to the top we were just talking about, where it has, the, like I said, the rectangular shape. But what you can see here is we reinforce several areas in the top with high density uh, foam. So 24 pound per square inch crushed foam. Um, that's great for- Those are for, these blocks here? That's correct. Those are these blocks here that you see kind of in the center and, and throughout. That's for where our, our hardtop support legs land. Oh, and okay. also here in the center, we've got it for the radar in the aft area for your outriggers, things like that. So it gives you a little extra st support in there. And in the gray rigging channels, what you see that, that is exactly what it is. It's a rig tube. It allows us to get wires from point A to point B when the two pieces of the hardtop are, are put together and um, that sandwich occurs. Yeah, so very gives, interesting. gives you a lot of different optionality here for side spreader lights or for different lights and different electronics configurations. If you want it on center line, if you want it off center line, things like that. Very cool. So this would be the so male this, part? That's correct. Part. Yeah, this would be the uh, the male part to our female. This is the, the bottom side of that for that extended hardtop. And again, you can see we put the high density foam on both sides so that we make sure that there's nothing, no no chance of crushing happening. Right. Press it to see it within these stages of the uh, process and then obviously seeing how nice the finished product comes out. But all the detail that goes into creating this hardtop is insane. Yeah, you can see the carpenters definitely have a, a very, tremendous attention to detail where this is two actually separate pieces of four lined up, but they use tracer lines to help make sure that the alignment is, is exactly where it is. All right, we're continuing along. We're seeing a vacuuming process here. Explain what we're looking at in uh, this one. Sure, so this is our 33, 36 hardtop. And what we're doing here is we're, this was a hand laid part. And so we put the two parts together. You can see this green line around it. That's our bonding putty. So to get the two parts to actually glue together. And then we use a vacuum system to help us ensure that the two parts are perfectly bonded together. No air voids, no gaps in between it, really creating an extra extra strength in the part. How long are you leaving it forced down like this with the vacuum? So we'll leave it under vacuum for overnight. So several hours. That's really just making sure that the putty has fully come to cure. Um, you can tell the environment in here, it's hot. Yeah. So that's only going to help us assist with that, that cure and help us make sure that we have a nice, even, smooth surface throughout the, the bottom side. Because ultimately what we're looking at here is the bottom side of the top. Gotcha. So yeah, different than uh, resin infusing. This was hand laid, but they are using the vacuum to put that pressure and make sure they get that even finish all the way through. Very nice. A lot of people don't take that step, you know, doing the hand laid application. So just shows the quality behind Invincible. All right, we're looking at one of the consoles here. David, take it away. I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. Yeah, so this is our 43 console mold. Wow. As you can tell, we spare no expense with all the different pieces that go into it. There's actually five or six different pieces that go into just this one mold. Wow. It gives us a 360 degree toe kick, uh, a door insert. So you have a nice recessed place for your door to go. We have window inserts on the 43 console. It's kind of a new feature that we've been doing lately where you have those inset windows. It gives it a nice modern look. Um, boats again windshields, we have a blocker insert that goes there in front of the mold. So there's several pieces. It work, turns out to be a lot of extra finish work for us, but it oh, ultimately sure. gives us a really nice high class finished part and allows us to have that finish. 100%, I can definitely appreciate that. For those of you watching at home that may not understand all that, some of these consoles can, can be created very simply in one or two parts. You basically separate them and you have very to no finish work at all. Having five or six of them is gonna leave finish work necessary in every single one of those lines where two pieces are coming together, but it does give you all the detail that you're seeing here on the Invincible console and really sets things apart. This is like a centerpiece, you know, at a, at a home in my opinion. So it's very important for me personally to have a nice console 
well laid out and, and definitely appreciate you guys taking that extra step or five or six extra steps to yeah. be able to accomplish that. That's right, yeah, it's the first thing you see when you get in the boat, when you're standing there at the helm and you look over the fiberglass finish, you know, we've gotta make sure that it's really got that high gloss, flat, you know, sharp looking with good corners everywhere. So it gives us a nice uh, separation between some of the other competition out there. Awesome. All right, here it looks like we're looking at a molded stringer grid. Is that correct? What, what, what model correct. are we looking at? Yeah, so this again is our 43. Um, okay. As you can see, it has a, it's a one piece continuous fiber uh, mold. So that doesn't give us, you know, it gives us constant continuity and strength. All of our bulkheads are laminated into the stringer mold while they're on the mold. Again, giving us that continuity of fiberglass. So something that is really important to us is the strength and stiffness that we get out of these parts. Um, so we reinforce them with the two by fours you see here. That's only for lifting. Obviously, no wood in our boats. Mm -hmm. They get trimmed off before they get put in the boat. It just is a Very added smart support. To that in the video. <laughs> added support just for the uh, the detooling process. Okay, and this leaves a bit of kind of like a hollow space in between. Are you running any sort of rigging through there? We do. We use a uh, yeah. We use actually a rain gutter, which is, serves as a really nice rig tube for us. It gives us plenty of access for uh, both uh, initial thought and aftermarket add-ons. Okay. Um, all of our stringers too are cored both inside and out. So we'll we'll have core on the exterior as you can see here. Yeah. And once we detool it and flip it over, we put the cored bulkheads inside after we put those rig tubes inside. This is something that also you don't see on every boat. Uh, a lot of times you will get, what is it, just basically foam with some, some sort, sort of fiberglass of, yeah, lamination sort of fiberglass over top? Ply, exactly. Which We're, isn't bad, but creating this, I'm sure in regards, does it help you with efficiency? It does help us on, with as efficiency. As well as the rigidity of the boat? It does. It helps us with efficiency, the, the strength and stiffness. We put some added uh, extra materials in here, some carbon strips as well to give us some more stiffness where we need it. Um, but the, the main thing for us is, is the strength that we get out of it. That, that's what's most important to us. Right. There's a lot of details on, on how this fiberglass works and the different angles and creating strength, which is way above our pay grade, but I can see what's happening here and how strong this piece has to be. This is, this is serious. I had actually no idea that you guys did this in the, as a stringer grids on the, on the Invincibles. Yeah, so it, it, it gives us the nice, uh, just some nice features. We don't have to worry about placing bulkheads manually. Everything is, is molded in. It gives us a nice set place for our fuel tanks, uh, you know, our center tank, our live, our bilge liner, fish boxes, things like that. So it just takes the manual measurement out of it and uh, ultimately gives us a really high yeah. strength part. Um, You're just getting this piece, dropping it in, laminating into uh, Yeah, into so, so basically the way it would work from here is we would detool it, trim the flange, flip it over, put our rig tubes in, our internal stiffening bulkheads, and then that would get lowered into the hull where it ultimately would be tied into the, the fiberglass structure of the hull via more, more laminate. Very interesting. Are you doing this on every model? This is done on every model. Okay. Yes, it is. Awesome. Learn something new today. Right, we're just walking by this deck and I saw this material sitting on it and I wanted to take the time to explain to you what this is. To some people this looks maybe just like a roll of fiberglass, but actually what this is, this is carbon Kevlar. Um, really? So we put this in all of our hulls, decks, and liners. Uh, and it's particular places where we need the added strength and stiffness. Also, this gives us incredible puncture resistance. As you know, Kevlar is used in bulb through vests. So we use it in our boats to give us that added layer. Uh, that added edge and, and give us comfort knowing that we put the best materials in our boat. And what areas are you saying? Certain areas or? Is yeah, so certain areas get it. For example, on our on our hulls, we put it along the keel. On our caps here, you can see we put it around our our, our um, hatch openings. Oh, okay, yeah, you can see it there. All right, so David actually allowed me to jump on this thing, which I thought was cool, and he jumped on as, as well. This is only your 33-foot cat, correct? Yeah, that's correct. This is the smallest cat we build. Look at the look at the size of this thing. It looks absolutely insane when you look at it this way. I mean, obviously the 33 is a great size, 33 with the beam and the size, but it's crazy to see it in this state inside of its mold laying sideways. Yes, it is. It, it uh, kind of exemplifies some of the features of our boat. You can see the stepped asymmetric hole bottom. Uh, we do integrated water pickups, trim tab pockets, things like that. Um, from a construction standpoint, this boat's just missing core on the bottom. Uh, we're standing on the core at hull side right now, okay. and it's missing some core on the tunnel. But it's just about ready, probably two or three more days in the mold, and we'll be pulling this one out and getting ready What's for the, the next one. What's the total process of a hole like this from start to being popped from the mold? It takes us about seven days when we hand lay it, and when we're infusing it, we're finding it about five days. We 
just left the lamination building, and as you can see here, we're around finished boats or boats that are at least out of the mold. Mm -hmm. So this is the sub-assembly building that we're in, and the idea is that the boats come in our back door here as just a hull, a raw unfinished hull, and we'll leave the front door as a finished product with fuel tanks, plumbing, electrical, uh, through holes, bilge pumps, things like that. Everything that can be done below the liner, before the liner gets installed, gets done in this building. Okay, oh, very interesting. I wanted to bring up something that I know is gonna be a question we get asked. I'm sure you guys have been floating around with it, but you have moved a portion of lamination to Mexico, correct? That's correct, and I think it's important to highlight that it's just lamination that's getting done down there. So the boats basically are, that are built in Mexico currently, mm -hmm. they get a hull deck liner and some small parts, consoles, leaning posts, hatches, things like this, get built down there. The stringers get assembled in the, in the mold, just as if we were being built here. The parts get loosely assembled, shipped, and then trucked down to Miami. Um, once they arrive here, they go through the same quality detail as if it were any other boat. It uh, doesn't make a difference to us where it's built. The quality process is the same throughout from the start of, of gel coat to when it gets finished and delivered. Okay. Um, so we, we take the boat apart once it arrives and that's when it would come into this building where we start to do the sub-assembly process. Gotcha. I wanted to mention it because obviously people make assumptions and they think Mexico is going to affect quality and obviously you guys, I'm sure if you're going to do something out there, it's not like you're just you know launching it out there not overseeing what's happening. You have a whole team set over there. I hear it's something about a huge facility you're building. Yeah, it's a serious operation over there before it gets here, which then it hits you know, the same line and structure that every other Invincible runs through. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a credible team of engineers, supervisors, manufacturing people out, out in, in our facility in Mexico. We communicate on, on a daily basis. Uh, anything that arises there, we don't know about. You know, we, we all, we're all communicating. We're help, there to help them. They're held to help, here to help us. Um, and yeah, we should definitely talk about the building down there. To say impressive is an understatement. It's about <laughs> a quarter mile long from one end to the other. Uh, over 400,000 square feet of, of manufacturing space for us. So we're really gonna be able to maximize our, our potential in terms of producing a number of boats. That's awesome. Hopefully we get the opportunity to check that out one day soon. And the way we see it, the best way to learn about something is to go straight to the horse's mouth. And that's what we're doing here at Invincible. So we're gonna try to learn as much as we can about the, the process from Mexico, hopefully one day all the way down to here. Relay that information to you so you guys know exactly what's happen, happening here and continue the same confidence with Invincible that we've had since the beginning. So we're standing in one of our 33 monoholes. Uh, this one's getting closer to completion in the sub-assembly process. As you can see, we're standing on the fuel tanks, laminated, foamed in place, uh, sealed off on all sides, so no chance of water kind of getting in there. Uh, up front, we've got some of our different components, water tank, hoses to get water to and from places. Uh, and towards the bilge here, you can just see some of the, the standard equipment in our boats, uh, fuel filters, fuel selector valves, uh, hot shot, wash down pumps, and uh, this boat's opted for the uh, Sea Star steering system. Okay, very nice. And just looking at this, I can see the how nice it is to have this stringer grid and all that space to be able to run all this plumbing through here. I mean, you got endless, endless space to run, run, run things from the bow all the way back to the stern with no problem at all. Yeah, one of the things that we like to highlight too is is the mindfulness of the chief protection. Yeah. Um, you know, some of some other boat builders and other people out there. Uh, this is a lesson that that definitely didn't come the easy way, but. <laughs> we, we do it the right way uh, from start to finish. We make sure that all of our hoses, all of our wires are protected with either split loom or some other secondary protection so that five, 10, 15 years down the road, you're not dealing with a cut hose or cut wire. Just little things like that, the, the attention to detail that our guys have when they're building the product is, is just second to none. Yeah. Well, the thing is you ha you're gonna come across issues, challenges, as long as you take the steps to better the product, just like that shave protection. Um, you know, you're headed in the right direction. I'm sure you guys are, are quite close compared to many out there. We're really happy with the way this one's coming together and just a couple days we'll have the liner ready to go in it. They'll start <coughs> at the back and they'll work on like things like, like I said, like the back painting, they'll paint the bilges white. Uh, we use a, a peel ply in our bow and our, in our bilge areas to give us a, a little bit better finish than more of a raw fiberglass. Sure. And then as they progress, more and more things will go in, in the boat. Additionally, the whole time, the sides and the bottoms are being worked. Everything's 100% tapped, checked for air voids in case there is an air void that's missed in, in the skin. Uh, that could be repaired here before it gets out in the field. We're checking for uh, some other you know, quality defects in the paint and the gel coat, making sure that it's gonna be 100% satisfactory to the customer at the end of the day. Final step here is, uh, is a final fuel tank pressure test. We'll go through, we'll make sure that our fuel valves are hooked up correctly. Uh, that you know, center, center port is poured on the valve. Um, mm -hmm. We'll do a, a thorough clean out, clean the tops of the stringers, which is the bonding surface for the liner, 
and ultimately it'll go next door, which is where they'll, they'll plexus the liner in place, they'll bolt, through bolt it in, and then they'll put the cap on. All right, we're in a new section here. We're just working our way you know, through the process. What, what stage are we at right here? So again, we're in a sub-assembly area, uh, a little different from our hulls. This is where we do our decks and our liners. Uh, as you see here, we're standing next to a 33 cat ring deck. The guys are just finishing some touch-up work around these hatch recesses. Uh, you know, it's an area that's prone to air voids, a little sure. tough to laminate. So we'll go back and touch them up, make sure that we get all the air voids out, get that gel coat just right before it goes down the line. Um, as we okay. kind of walk down this building, We've got liners over here to our right that, that, that are getting um, finished work done to them. They're getting wiring put in for lights. Uh, if you've got electric reels and selected that option, you'll get your electric reel wiring there. Uh, any dive door cutouts, some finished work around that. And again, any touch up work that needs to happen in the gel coat or in the non-skid to make it a perfect part. Uh, to my left behind these curtains is where we're doing our console and leaning post finishing. Um, again, just some touch up work that happens over here. Uh, you can tell the blue Dicom gel there, that helps our guys know where they've sanded, what they're sanding on, um, so they just have an idea, a little, little reference tool that helps us really make sure we get every single spot, every single square inch of that when we're, when we're working it down. Uh, like we talked about when we were in the lamination building, there's a lot of post finish work that goes into these mm -hmm. things to make them just right, so we have to go through the effort here and make sure that, that, that every surface is sanded so that when we do the respray, that gel really adheres to it. Right. Moving on down the line, again, just some more liners here that, that have just getting worked up and getting the lights put in. And coming up on our left here, we've got a 33 mono ring deck, which uh, to our surprise, it looks like it has the record for most rod holders <laughs> ever. Uh, you think they're in the fishing here? Uh, it looks like they're in the fishing. This customer has selected the, the second transom live well as well, which is an option on our 33 mono. Very nice. And it looks like it's about 12 inch spacing throughout for the rod holders. Yeah. No joke, you don't want to have to take an extra step to be able to put that rod down. When things get serious, these tournament guys don't play around with that. Obviously, we've been around it a little bit lately and uh, really enjoy it, but you can see why you know, these guys rig these boats the way that they do, and there's you know, usually a ton of thought and a lot of experience behind a layout like that. Absolutely. Curious to see that thing when it's done. I'd love to see it when it's done. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things that differentiates Invincible to some of our other brands that are out there is that we have the flexibility to do basically whatever you want within reason on the semi-custom job. So if you guys tell us that, hey, we want 50 rod holders on our deck and we don't have a good reason why you can't do it, we'll do it. <laughs> right. So this is another deck that's coming up. This one uh, a little less on the rod holder selection, but it, it's just getting marked up here for the rod holders, cleats, fuel fills, things like that before they get put in. So most of these or, or all of them are built to a specific spec to order. Each one or are dealer boats something different or are they specking their own boats? How does that all work? Yeah, so basically every boat has its own specific spec. Now whether a dealer wants to or wants to not put electronics in the boat, rod holders, things like that, that's their, mm -hmm. that's their election to do so. Uh, okay. There's not a specific spec for a dealer boat versus a, a customer direct boat, but um, they can both, both have the, the option to do whatever they would like, the freedom to do whatever they'd like in that regard. Gotcha. Standing behind us here, we've got a, a nice shark gray 33 cat. Of course, you can't really tell too much from the whole side since it's mostly covered, but this boat did get the deck and liner put on today. And as you can see, their guys are staged here to put the rub rail on just before it transitions across the street. All right, so this is where all the pieces come together. This is our plexus rig. This so is, that's what adheres everything together before you sandwich it, you're putting? Yeah, this is the plexus material we use that goes underneath the liner on top of the stringers or in case of the cats on top of the tunnels to bond that liner to the, to the hull and then the deck as well to the assembly. And I see at this point you've done whatever work needs to be done to the exterior, you did a great job protecting this thing. Yeah, the, the paper gives our uh, quality team a, a, a notification, a visual notification that the, the quality touch up work on the whole side is finished and it also protects the boat from any overspray or dust or dirt when sure. it's transitioning from building to building. Okay, and from this point, where does it head? So from Here. this point, it'll go out this door that's closed across the street to our general assembly facility. That's where we'll start to put the furniture in, uh, console, leaning posts, any forward seating options, hard top, things like that. And the boat really becomes more of a complete package. All right, very cool. Let's go yeah. check that out. Let's look. Continuing along, 
where are we at here, David? So this is our building number five, more formally known as General Assembly. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the last building we were in showed the boat in a sort of incomplete state, but assembled, right? Where the liner was in the hull and the deck was on the assembly. Right. So the boat transitions through the door behind us here and into this building where there's no furniture on it, there's no engines on it, the dive door areas are unfinished, and they'll ultimately leave this building out the doors behind us ready to go to sea trial. So we will use the, the cranes behind us, load the boats off the dollies onto the trailers you see, mm -hmm. and take them to the water. So every single one of our boats goes through a, a very stringent sea trial checklist. Every boat gets run in the ocean, run offshore for a short period of time. We know we're not gonna try to put a bunch of hours on customers' engines, but we do sure. wanna make sure that if something's gonna go wrong with a boat, it goes wrong on our time and not in the hands of our customers. Mechanical systems, engines, air conditioners, sea keepers, uh, pumps, plumbing, lights, everything you can imagine gets tested at the sea trial. Even if we have a tower and, and it means we have to take an extra step and bring a team to the water, assemble it, make sure that that tower is functional and disassemble it before it comes back for oh, final wow. prep, we go through that added step. It's a huge, huge part of our quality control process and we take great pride in all the steps that we do at the water. Excellent. Yep, definitely important. And here, you said we have two 33s. We got a 33 cat and a 33 monohull side by side, both on their individual lines, it looks like. So yeah. you can kind of get an idea of where the boat's at at this stage before it reaches the final one before delivery. But there's so many parts that go into a boat like this. And the, you know, the process obviously is a tedious one. So to organize it, you know, like you guys do, um, and obviously make sure you get everything correct and at the quality and standard you guys expect out of an Invincible. You know, it's quite the process here and it's very cool to be able to see it. Yeah, it is. And, and you can see here, this boat's definitely more close to, to being in a, a sea trial ready state. Our hard tops on, bonded, assembled, through bolted, uh, radar, outriggers, antennas, everything's ready to go. So the last step before this boat will go to the water is we do what's called a pre-sea trial check where mm -hmm. we actually take it outside, we hook it up to the hose, um, this one doesn't actually have engines on it yet, but if we had engines, we would start the engines, uh, run all the pumps, make sure everything's good, give it a quick rinse so we're not getting any fiberglass dust in our guy's eyes, mm -hmm. uh, and then take it to the water. All right, well, it's cool to see all the pieces that we've seen individually from leaning post, console, cap, liner, stringer system underneath that, and finally see it come together to what actually looks like a boat at this point. Yeah, it's pretty, so. pretty cool to watch the whole, the whole assembly process happen and Again, it, it's very, you have to be very mindful of attention to detail. You know, one of the things I like to point out that our guys do a good job of is all the screw heads for our legs are in, in a line. So just little things like that make the difference. Oh, so they're actually facing the exact same direction, are, are you saying? That's, yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> wow, look at that. I hadn't noticed it, but yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, well, a little something extra here at Invincible, taking it that extra step to, uh, you know, put themselves above the competition, right? That's right. So that's what, uh, it's a constant battle out here. And to be the best of the best, you got to do things like that. So David, just so we can get an idea, what's the time frame usually from when a boat enters this building to the point that it actually leaves onto the next phase? Yeah, so when the boat comes in and that subassembled phase where the liner's in, the deck's on, the, the, the boat's kind of raw, it's anywhere from, from two to four weeks to, to put the furniture in, to get everything assembled, wiring, engines, uh, and then out the door to sea trial. So somewhere in that two to four week range. And it really does depend on the customer and the amount of options that are selected. You know, a boat with very little options, no electronics, that's gonna blow through the line a lot faster than a boat that's heavily loaded. Sure. We're off to next. Uh, we'll go over to building number four, which is our final production. That's where the uh, QC list will get worked off. Anything that's found at sea trial and just the last little bit of uh, polish, buff, wax, and, and then delivery. Okay, perfect, let's do it. So walking my way up the other catwalk, we have a 35 catamaran here. I believe we have a 37 behind that and a 46 behind that. For me, it's always been incredibly interesting to watch how each individual company builds these boats and the process from the beginning to the end. So we absolutely love these walkthroughs and factory tours and we hope you guys enjoy them as much as we do. So obviously there's tools stacked up in here. Don't pay any mind to it. If you guys were building a boat at home, I guarantee you it would not look like this. So they do really do a nice job considering all the individual pieces, the wires they have to run, the rigging, the different parts of fiberglass, powder coated piping, hard top, hatches. I mean, it's insane what it takes to build one of these things. So we're having a good time here. Uh, we hope you guys do as well. Like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. And we're going to continue on to the final phase where the boat is just about wrapped up and ready to go and delivered to its new owner.
here in the final phase, correct, of the entire Invincible process. This is a 43 that absolutely blew our minds from a distance. We saw this thing and it is gorgeous. So what are we gonna do? We wanna walk through this thing and just show a little bit of the Invin Invincible touch yeah, while we're here? I think that's a good idea, a good place to start. So this is probably one of the most loaded 43s that we've done to date. Uh, starting in the stern, triple 600 V12s from Mercury, uh, laser etched live well lids. Standard equipment on our 43s is the is the window. That's a new feature on this boat that we're, we're really happy with. It, it gives you uh, gives you a nice way to keep an eye on your baits when you're up there at the helm, and it's, yes. it just adds a little pop a nice to the boat. Touch for sure. Yeah. Uh, we can take a look at the build, some always exciting equipment in there. This boat's been optioned with a Sea Keeper 3 below the liner. Uh, best marine sea chest is standard and invincibles. Uh, and then, as you may notice, this one does have the, the bilge liner in it, so it gives us a nice finished look yep. and feel on it. Really nice. And the, the standard is the best marine sea chest? The standard is the best marine sea chest, that's right. right. So you can tell, I mean, these boats are built to fish. As beautiful as this thing is, every single one of them is built to tackle the job with absolutely no struggle at all. When you're trying to load up these live wells with tons of bait, we've been in the situation where we haven't had a sea chest and we've struggled trying to pressurize the well, making long runs to the Bahamas. Having that in there is an absolute game changer when you're when you're trying to do heavy duty live bait fishing. Yeah, absolutely. This boat's definitely equipped for it too. 250 gallon wells in the transom. Uh, when the, the Sea Keeper option's not selected below the liner, we could do an additional 70 gallon in the floor. Awesome. Um, back here, we've got our, our flat back leaning post is what we call it. It gives us nice cockpit space with the uh, slide out cooler option underneath it. Mm -hmm. uh, up here, we've just got a little bit of tackle storage, some leader storage. You could use this as a cutting board if you'd like, you know, whatever you want to use it for there. And then below here, just some more tackle storage and drawers. Moving forward on this boat, I guess one other thing to highlight is that the, uh, the new hardtop allows us to put an MFD in the back there. So when you're standing in a cockpit, you could see, uh, you know, what the bottom's doing, where you are, how fast you're going, anything like that. I noticed the hard top, and we went through this a little bit earlier in the walkthrough. These these extensions that you create here is the main function for that additional shade, or, or what's what's the idea compared to the standard rectangular? Yeah, so this gives us a little bit more shade. It gives us a little bit more geometry. It's just a little more appealing to look at as well. It's just a, a little bit different from what we're used to doing, where uh, our traditional surfboard style, we'll call it, you know, two part hard top. This has just got a little more pizzazz to it. Very nice. And with the sun you have out there, I mean, it's nice to be able to tuck away. A little bit and I can see this definitely accomplishing that that feat right there. Absolutely. So moving forward, this customer you can see they optioned for the teak seats. Uh, again, dual row seat package here. So teak seats front and back. The biggest garment screens they could get, which look like the 24s on this boat. Mercury joystick, you know, the works, the FLIR camera, and overhead, as we kind of talked about when we were in the lamination building, they've got their Mercury vessel view and their stereo control. Yeah, you guys do such a nice job attaching this piping to the fiberglass it almost looks like it's an extension of that fiberglass piece you can you can't even see where that cock line is really clean work thank you yeah and one of the things we like to highlight too is the nice finish of this this top of the console piece some people like to put sea deck a gator step or whatever it is up here um, we have the option to put gator step but you know it, it's it's a beautiful piece of the boat that that sometimes we like to just keep player so david jumped into that console cabin if you can go ahead and take us around yeah, so here we are in our 43 console. This is our new extended console option on the boat. It actually is the standard and only option with it, but you can see for a 43 foot boat or 42 foot boat, it, it's got a lot of space in yeah, here. Sure uh, full standing headroom. Uh, we've got a little partition to divide the, the head from the rest of the console space. Uh, a sink with vanity, six rod storage comes standard. This boat has option for the console air conditioner as well. So air, AC inside and on the helm. And then forward, we've got a full berth that'll fit uh, two people comfortably. All right, working our way towards the bow, we have to show you this lounger right here. It's absolutely massive, and the amount of cooler space and just storage space you offer with this is incredible. So can we go ahead and do yeah, the and Yeah, absolutely. Over 100 gallons of over-insulated storage here. So all of this is insulation foam. When we manufacture it, we actually flip the console upside down after we put the tub in, and we fill the entire cavity with two-part foam that expands fills every square or every cubic inch of the uh, of the space so we really get the full uh, benefit of the the insulation foam additionally on the 43 we've got two fish boxes aft a forward fish box center and these can be used as fish boxes that we stand on although we just typically tell them they're storage, storage. although they are insulated yeah, and it's nice you created the dividers here it's such a large space you can I'm sure take these things out and 
throw a few tuna in there with no problem, but most of the time you might want to divide some ice, you know, drinks, and you even have a compartment here if you want to throw something above it and keep it dry. So you guys did a really nice job dividing this space up. Yeah, we like to keep that as for our sandwich space is kind of what we call it. Just keep, yeah. keep them out of the getting wet and soggy. But yeah, exactly like you said, Alan, you know, clean ice up here, dirty ice in the back, however you want to do it, there's plenty of place for it. Continuing and ending off in the bow, is this forward seating an option? Or this is, is this... Yeah, this is forward seating an option. Uh, just bolts on the deck, so it's a nice clean option. Easy for us to manufacture, easy for our guys to install. It's super comfortable too. This one's missing the backrest at the moment, but it does have the teak backrest, the ladder backrest to match mm -hmm. the seats. Uh, it ties in well with the faux teak tow rail on this boat. Uh, this customer particularly optioned for the powder coated white bow rail as well, just to tie in with the rest of the powder coating in the boat, but super comfortable. You know, we're not feeling cramped up here between the extended no, coffin and the forward seats. So uh, it's a nice use of space if, if you're looking for that. Yeah, there's so much room up here that you have plenty of room to fish if you want to. This offers obviously seating, which is incredibly important when you have a large group on the boat. Storage underneath it. It looks like you can remove the centerpiece to access, you know, your anchor, or maybe fight a sailfish from up here. Additional washdowns, fresh and salt water. So excellent option. You have so much real estate on this boat that you're really not impeding in your deck space whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. So there you have it. That is our full walkthrough here at the Invincible Boats facility. David, I want to thank you very much and the whole team here at Invincible for taking the time to show us how you guys build your boats here. It's always incredibly enjoyable for us to see the process. It's a ton of fun, I know, for a lot of people out there. So thank you guys very much. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. We love showing everybody around. We love to educate people on what differentiates us and how we build our product. We're, we're extremely proud of it. And uh, I think we build a, a really, really cool, really badass boat. All right, guys. So if you like the video, share this with all your friends, anybody that would like to see inside the Invincible facility. Subscribe, like, do all that stuff. And we thank you as always. My name is Alan from Center Consoles Only. We'll see you again soon.